Hello, everyone. This is Ted Check, Public Relations Manager for the International Foundation for Protection Officers. I'm here with Patrick Roach. Patrick, uh, welcome to uh, to the IFPO. Welcome uh, and congratulations. You uh, you just earned your uh, CPO through the IFPO. Um, so so I wanted to uh, to say that to you and and um, yeah, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, you know how you got your start in security. What motivated you uh, to to uh, get into it, and and if you had any influences um, that, that led you in that direction? Yeah, well, I left school. I left school at eighteen, and my older brother worked in security, so I started working with my older brother, and I done door work. So then I worked. I started my job that I'm I'm in now. When I was nineteen, I'm here fifteen years. And I'm the head of security in a shopping center in Dublin. So I started off as a security officer, then security supervisor, and then security manager. And I've been the manager here for the last 10 years. Fantastic. So you said, uh, if, I, if I understood you correctly, you said dog walk. What was, what was the first, uh, sorry about that, it, it, uh, your first job that you had? Oh, door walk. I was a door man in a in a bar. Oh, okay, okay. Like a, we call it a bouncer over here. Okay. A bouncer, yeah, yeah. No yeah. doorman. Yeah, we sometimes we say doorman here too. Okay, so that was your first job within security. Yeah, gotcha. And I then then I started in um, retail security. I um, started off working in the shopping center. I'm here 15 years. I started working here when I was 19, and I've um, I started when I was 19 as a security officer then security supervisor and then security manager for the last 10 years. Great, and that's that's in Dublin? Yeah, it's in Dublin, in a shopping center in Dublin. Great, and and how did you become aware of the IFPO? Well, I well, have a good friend in security, um, Gary Bergen, and he's affiliated with the IFPO in um, Ireland. And um, Gary, Gary knows me, he knows, I, I've done a few courses online, um, mm -hmm. on security and I done a diploma in security risk assessments and I was speaking to Gary about that and then he got me a place for the on the IFPO CPO course and it's just gone on from there. And, and what did you think of it? What did you, you think of the course? The course I thought was it's, it's a very good course like it covers I think there's 45 chapters in the book and it just covers a broad range of security like it's not too detailed about anything. It just covers a good base. Like it's a very good place to start if you're looking to uh, to certify in security. Right, and that's I, I think that's by design too. Because if you if you want to go on, there are other courses that you can take. You know the the CSSM the certified uh, in security supervision and yeah. management. You know if you want to elevate further, you can do that. So, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It gives uh, it gives people a good base. It does um, indeed, yeah. to, to get their start or or to continue their education within uh, the industry, for sure. Yeah. And then and then uh, so you were part of the first cohort uh, in Ireland that that earned uh, their CPO. And I think if I if I looked at the photo correctly, there were eight of you. There was there was eight, but there was there was ten altogether. Two oh. were were in walk. And then there was 10, 10 graduates all together. Okay, great. And then, and then uh, you got a visit from Mike Hurst, who is the IFPO UK and Ireland uh, yeah. president. So he uh, came from England to, uh, to congratulate you folks and, and I guess uh, hand out the, uh, uh, the certificates. So that, that must, how did, how did that, uh, what was that experience like for you to, you know, to get the certificate and hold it in your hand? And uh, yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a great honor to, um after studying I, I studied i did study hard for the the cpo exam and then everything um when, when i when i passed the exam and then when i found out i got the highest marks in the, right. the cohort as we call it um i was just blown away it's unbelievable because there was a very high standard of security professionals doing the exam like there's there's people who took the exam They've multiple master's degrees. I think one guy has a doctorate, and it's like very high standards. Mm -hmm. But to get the best mark is it's been unreal. That's great. 
And and speaking of masters, you just recently were accepted into the master's program uh, in criminal justice at the uh, the University of Portsmouth, which is in uh, that's in England, right? That's in England, yeah. So the plan is I'm going to work as I am and I'm doing that course over distance learning. So that's going to take me two years to get my master's degree. But the thing about the, the CPO and the smaller online courses, I, I, I started off doing the smaller online courses. Then I done my diploma in security risk assessments and then I done my CPO. And after doing the CPO exam, it's just each little course gives you more confidence and drive to further yourself. And then I applied for um, the masters. I'm, I'm, I've applied for the masters in security management and intelligence. Mm. That's um, mm. and I only found out this week that um, I got accepted into college, so I'm over the moon. But I don't think I don't think I would have applied outright to do the master's degree. It's the little stepping stones and the the confidence it gives to just help you along the way. And when I was applying for my master's degree, I was able to put down that I um, had my CPO and I have my diploma in security risk assessments. And I don't think that that hurt the application process. Oh, no, if anything, it helped. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, shows that, uh, you know, you've got that motivation and that you've, um, yeah. you know, you, you kind of in that in that rhythm of, of uh, you know, studying and, and taking a test successfully passing a test and, and, you know, taking those steps and, and uh, increasing the, uh, the difficulty and everything like yeah. that. So yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Well, oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, and so, uh, I'm sure you've, you've thought about, uh, about the future and, uh, you know, what you're going to do once you get that, uh, your master's, what, uh, what, what kind of things have been going on? You know, what, what kind of things have you been thinking about, you know, as far as what you might address or, or where you might go within the industry? I'm looking to, well, I'm, I'm the, the security manager based in the shopping center. I'm looking to move on and upscale. And I want to be an area manager within a company uh, or a security consultant. Mm -hmm. The main thing now is to just get through the, the masters. That's the, the plan for now. I'm going to walk and get through the masters and one thing at a time. But the future looks yeah. like security consultancy or um, area management, contracts management. Great. And so, you know, with, with consultancy, I mean, uh, maybe joining a, a firm or starting your own, possibly. Yeah. I would guess. Yeah, that's the plan. Great, great. What uh, what what would you what would your advice be to uh, to young uh, men and women who are just starting out in the industry? Because uh, you know, look at you. You you started out when you were real young, and and uh, just rose up through the ranks. Um, yeah. What would your advice be to them? Well, the, just education. It's it, it just gives you so much confidence to do more. And then when you, you when you do that, it's not enough. You want to just keep on fordering yourself. You just, you just want to keep. I just want to keep on studying and walking. I'm not, I'm not happy. I just want to keep on studying. There was a, a moment when I passed the CPO exam and I was waiting on the masters, and it was the first time in a couple of months I haven't been walking and studying, and, and I missed it. <laughs> wow. You do, you do miss it. <laughs> as nerdy as that sounds, it's the no, truth. No, no. <laughs> hey, I, no, I, and and so I, I think also uh, uh, within what you're saying, uh, starting small, right? Start start with start, a small yeah, thing. Yeah, start small, build your confidence up, and just go bigger and bigger each time. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. Great. And and what about uh, we, we did mention uh, briefly uh, Gary Bergen, and and also Mike Hurst. How, how did those two guys? And and if you want to mention anybody else as well. Uh, how did they how did they help you out with you know motivate you and and uh, kind of kind of help you in your in your studying well the, the the biggest motivator for me was I looked at Gary Bergen's CV <laughs> he, he's just the guy is unreal he has so many so many letters after his name he's got Something a lot of letters patients. after his name that's true yeah oh yeah so I said to myself if I can get half of them letters I'll, I'll be a happy man uh, mm. Gary Bergen uh, Paul Kellett, um, right there with the FPO, and then um, and obviously my course for for taking the trip across the sea to, to give out the certificates. But Gary Bergen in particular, he's been he's a fantastic man. He's a fantastic help. 
That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Patrick, uh, any, anything else that you'd like to add? Anyone else that you'd like to thank or, or anything that you'd like to say at this point? Well, just the, regarding the CPO exam, it's, I'm, I'm happy that it's over here now. I think it's, I've, I've worked with two boys um, in, the, in, in the shopping centre. They're not with me anymore, but they, they rang me up and said they're, they're going to do the CPO exam. I'm going to get four of my guys that are interested in doing the exam as well. And I'm going to talk to the director of my company. And I, I'd love to see it over here because it, it'll do no harm. It'll only help the industry. Right. So, yeah, hopefully they'll have a, uh, a second cohort very soon. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Great. Um, oh, the one other thing I did want to ask you, uh, Patrick, um, when you when you look back on your career so far, what are what are kind of some of the highlights uh, in your career? You know, as far as maybe incidents that have occurred or or other things, um, you know, with, within your the various jobs that you've held. Yeah, well, the, the highlight, I've, I've had one job basically my whole adult life. The highlight I've had for the last while is getting the, the master's degree mm. and, um, and just studying along the way. I just, the, the only thing, I wish I didn't leave it so late. I'm only 36 now, but I, I wish I had picked it up earlier. If that was a bit of advice I was going to give to someone, it's just start early. Start mm. off small and build yourself up. Well, 36, well, yeah, you're, you're young. You're young yet. Yeah, not too old. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Patrick, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for taking the time to talk. Uh, we appreciate it. And, and again, congratulations on, on the CPO. Thanks and, very much, Ted. Thank you. And then, and then getting admitted uh, to the uh, to the Masters. And as a, as a side note, I grew up in a town called Portsmouth in, here yeah. in the States in Rhode Island. It's near, uh, it's, I don't know if you've ever, ever heard of Newport, Rhode Island, but it's, Portland yeah, yeah. is very near Newport. Um, so uh, it's kind of an interesting thing when I saw that University of Portsmouth and uh, I was like, oh, all right, yeah, my old stomping grounds. But yeah, um, yeah that, that's cool. So, so you'll just, you'll remain in Dublin and you'll, you'll continue to work and then you'll, just, you'll do the uh, online courses uh, at the university then. Yeah. That's great. That's the plan. Fantastic. Thanks again, Patrick. Really appreciate it. No problem, it. Ted. It was great to meet you. Yeah, same I'll talk here. talk to you again. All right. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.